This video lecture will cover section 4.5, which has to do with the derivatives of logarithmic and exponential functions. So you can see here the first definition is for the derivative of a general exponential function a to the x, where a is some positive base. And you can see from the pattern that the derivative is given by the natural log of the base times the original function. So let's take a look how this works with a few examples. So this function uh, b of x is an exponential form and there is a scalar coefficient out front. So this 3 is what we call a scalar coefficient that just scales our function. And as we saw in the previous sections, the scalar coefficients uh, don't affect the derivative. So the derivative of b to the x is the same as 3 times the derivative of 1.1 raised to the x. So to put this another way, you can disregard the 3, leave it alone. So we leave the 3 alone and then following that definition that's provided above, the derivative is the natural log of our base, which is 1.01 .01 in this case, times the original function, so times 1.01 .01 raised to the x. So that's it for the derivative of any exponential function. So go ahead and try these functions and I'll provide those solutions now and we can walk through those together. So let's look at these solutions. So you can see for the first problem, uh, this follows directly from the derivative. So we notice that this function is an exponential with a base of five. And so the rule is that the derivative of any exponential is the natural log of the base times the original function. This problem is quite similar for part B. However, uh, the one thing that we should really make sure to pay attention to is the type of functions we're dealing with. So we're, we're going to now start to include all different types of functions that we can differentiate. And so this is a combination of a power function with a scalar constant plus an exponential function. So x to the fourth is not exponential, so we should not apply the exponential rule. However, 4 to the x is exponential. So for the first term, uh, the derivative is 12x cubed and we get that by applying the, the power rule first, and then the second term has the derivative of natural log of four times four to the x, and that comes from our rule for exponential derivatives. For the last problem, we need to first apply a quotient rule, and before we do that, it's helpful to write any fractional terms like this one over t in an equivalent form, uh, which is t to the negative one in this case, and that will just be easier when we go to take derivatives later. So then we notice that this function uh, has a quotient in it, and so the quotient rule is where we should start, and so that's the first line here, which is just the quotient rule. So it's really important at this stage to make sure you're uh, comfortable with the rules that we previously discussed, because as you can see, now we're going to start to have functions where we need to be able to use all these rules uh, in combination. So uh, from here, all we need to do is solve two derivatives. The derivative of 3 to the t is given to us by the de that definition. So that's the natural log of 3 uh, times 3 to the t. And then we need this derivative here, but this is just the derivative of two power functions. We get 1 minus t to the negative 2 for that derivative. So as we've seen, uh, the base e is quite common for a lot of problems. We see that a lot in this course. So it's helpful to remember a specific case for the derivative of e to the x. e to the x is just uh, another exponential function with, with the base e. And recall that e is a constant, so it's an irrational number. And it's about 2.72, so just, just like pi is an uh, irrational number. So this allows us to just apply that rule and find the derivative, and this is a rule that's worth memorizing. However, you could always just find this rule on your own. So if we apply the rule, we should get natural log of the base, natural log of e, times e to the x, and then this is just equal to e to the x. That last step comes from the fact that the natural log of e is 1. So this is a derivative rule that's worth memorizing. However, you can just apply the general rule to e to the x and arrive at this on your own at any time. So let's work through an example here where we have to apply this rule for e. And also, uh, we need chain rule here. So if you see uh, an, an exponential function and anything other than just a variable in the exponent, then that's a clue that you're going to need chain rule. So you can see in this case that we have negative 0.001x in the exponent, 
And so this is a clue that we need chain rule because this is composition of the function negative 0 0.001 times x, and then the outer function would be 5e to the x. So the procedure is the same here. Uh, we're going to first think of this function p of x as a composition of two more elementary and differentiable functions f and g, and then by finding those functions and writing it in this way, the chain rule tells us a rule for the derivative. In particular, it tells us that f prime of g times g prime is the derivative of our function. So as we discussed, g, our inner function, was the thing inside the parentheses, so in this case negative 0.001 times x. f is what's left over, so uh, cover that part that you've accounted for with your finger and then look at what's left over and put the variable in there. So if we do that, we see that the outer function f that works in this case is 5e e to the x. So this is useful because f and g are two functions that we can differentiate using the rules that we've previously seen. So f prime comes from our definition of the derivative of an exponential function. So the derivative of e to the x, as we discussed above, is just itself. 5 is a scalar constant, so that doesn't change the derivative. The derivative of g prime we covered in section 4.1, and this gives us negative 0.001. So now it's just a matter of substituting these functions into our definition of the derivative based on chain rule. So you may want to write this term in the margin just to make sure you get it right. So do this in a few steps if you need to. So f prime of g is f prime of negative 0.001 times x. Uh, then this is equal to f prime, notice, uh, takes its input and says e to that input times 5. So, And our input is not x, but negative 0 0.001 times x. So that whole term uh, is what you get there for f prime of g. And now making the substitution, uh, we get 5e raised to the negative 0 0.001 times x times g prime, which is just negative 0 0.001. When there's just scalar... Uh, constants like this, you can simplify that really quickly usually, so I would recommend doing that, but otherwise uh, you don't really need to simplify anything. So in the end, cleaning this up a bit, we get the following. So this is an example of a function where we have to use uh, both chain rule, power rule, and our exponential rule. So we're going to start having to use all these rules in combination. The other rule that we'll cover in this section are derivatives of logarithmic functions. So the derivative rule is given here for any base uh, b, the log base b of x derivative is 1 over x times the natural log of the base b. So looking at these functions, you can go ahead and try this on your own, otherwise just follow along. So L prime in this case uh, is given by 12.4, that's a scalar constant that doesn't change the derivative. Uh, times x over the natural log of 10. Remember that when you see just log of x, that's log base 10. The second term, 5, is a constant, so its derivative is 0. For g, we need to use chain rule, and our inner function will be 3t. So when you apply the chain rule to this function, you'll get the following. So if you need more guidance to see how the chain rule applies here, you could call your function f of h where h is representing your inner function and f your outer function. And you could define f to be the log of t and h to be 3 times t. From there you could apply the chain rule and simplify and you'll get the solution that we arrived at here. Part c also requires chain rule, so go ahead and try that on your own and I'll uh, also provide you with the breakdown of the inner and outer function. That would be a good choice for that problem. So I've provided you here with the solution in simplified form as well as some instruction about how to go about finding those inner and outer functions to apply chain rule. So in general, when you see a logarithm, if it's not just log of x or log of t like in part a, then you can't apply the rule directly and you have to use chain rule. So in part b and c, we have 3t inside the log and the square root of x plus 1 respectively. So that gives you a clue that whenever you see things of this form, 
that you need to apply chain rule to find the derivative, and the inner function will be the thing inside of the log, and the outer function will be the log in this case. So just like it was practical to find a particular rule for e to the x, it, the same thing applies for the natural log of x. Recall that the natural log of x is just log base e. So if we want the derivative of natural log, then we can understand that in terms of the derivative rule uh, by writing it as log base e. When we apply the derivative rule for logarithms, we get the following. This gives us the rule that the derivative of the natural log of x is just 1 over x. So go ahead and try question 6 on your own, and I'll provide the solution now. So that concludes the material for this section. The rest of the problems are meant for practice, so I'll provide you with those solutions now.